Good morning. Good morning. Are you having a great day? Yeah. Yeah, I know it's all hectic, but we live to find another day. Uh, it's the last day. We're getting there. So, um, we're here to talk about the movement shutter. And I know some of us have a good idea of where we are as far as the movement charter uh, is concerned. Others are also here perhaps to learn more about it and what the input is expected from us so far. So uh, this conversation is basically aimed at understanding the role of the movement charter in our movement. Uh, even for the newcomers, you'll get a chance to understand what it is, uh, what it seeks to do, and the current state um, of things as far as the charter is concerned. So I have a great panel here with members of the Movement Charter Drafting Committee to understand, like, yeah, they tell us where are we, what do we need to do, and how are we going to get there ahead of Movement Strategy 2030. So we start with the far right. Please introduce yourself. Tell us what you expect in this session. Yes. Thank you, Winnie. Thank you for this gentle introduction of us. You see us passing the mic that is just so the translators can do their work and uh, other people who can also follow. I'm Seal. I'm a member of the Movement Charter Drafting Committee. I've been with the movement since 2006. I hold several admin functions on different Wikipedias and have uh, some experience uh, as board member of Wikimedia and admins previously, Financial Audit Committee, Wikimedia Belgium. And I'm very happy to have been invited here um, this weekend to be with you. My name is George Fogo, I'm a member of MCDC, I'm also a Wikipedia since uh, 2013, uh, General Secretary of Wikifranca, uh, I think it's good for me. Thank you very much. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Anas, and uh, at every weekend I lose my voice for some reason. Uh, I am uh, from Morocco. Uh, I just discovered that I started uh, the Wikimedia work like uh, George the same year in 2013. And I am a member of the Movement Charter Drafting Committee. Really happy to be here. Hi everyone, good to see so many familiar faces and some new faces as well. Uh, my name is Yo Brankam. I'm uh, one of many advisors to the Movement Charter Drafting Committee. I work with the Wikimedia Foundation, and in my role, I'm the Senior Movement Strategy Specialist. That's amazing. I also realized I forgot to introduce myself. So my name is Vini Kabinti, Senior Movement Communication Specialist for Sub-Saharan Africa. So let's start uh, with you, Seal, to just give us a quick overview um, of what this movement chapter is uh, all about and where we are currently. Thank you. Let's get. We have a few slides prepared for you. Um, we next slide, please. <laughs> yeah, oh, it worked just before. Maybe turn that. Yeah, just get behind the laptop and flick the arrows. Easy solution. So this movement charter thing, what is it? What, what's the movement charter? Um, the movement charter um, was, um, came from the Movement Strategy 2030. Movement Strategy 2030, you've been hearing a mention in the previous conversation as well. It was a very long process and a large process um, with big consultations with everyone and it uh, concluded in 10 recommendations and 42 initiatives. Um, the recommendation number four speaks about equity in decision making. And equity in decision making um, is uh, the 
recommendation that actually grounds uh, the, movement, the Wikimedia Movement Charter. So next slide, please. technical stuff. The word equity. Can I ask you here today, do you know what the word equity means? Because I am not a native English speaker. For me, we don't have, um, in Dutch, I'm from the Netherlands, we don't have a word that um, equals equity. And equity actually means that um, it's, it's like a different level of equality. Equality means everyone is on the same level, and equity actually helps people that are not on the same level, they boost them up just a little bit so they can participate on that same level as all the others. It's a beautiful word, but I am not sure if it exists in every language. Um, so, the recommendation number four in uh, the movement strategy is actually, actually quite complicated language. It's like this, or at least I think it's, it's complicated language still. And um, in plain English, it actually says that we understand that we are different, and we work uh, from different countries, different contexts, different backgrounds. We are, um, but still we are one movement. We share the values. We will describe those shared values in the movement charter. Why are we here? Why do we comedians do what we do? Um, and because we are one movement, we have shared responsibilities that we need to address. Because we are one movement, we have shared responsibilities that we need to address and that we all are uh, should should have at least a part in. Um, to make this work, we will write and ratify a document for the whole Wikimedia movement, and that's the movement chart. It will clarify the rights and responsibilities and the roles that we have in uh, our global movement. Working again, oh, that's cool. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Ah, so it's not that we in, in, in 20, uh, 2018 just thought, oh yeah, let's let's start something global. <laughs> it's quite a, quite a, a, a long line of history that comes before it. Um, some of you that might have been there in um, in Washington um, that were already involved in affiliates and. Chapters might remember the Wikimedia Chapters Association. Uh, we had movement roles projects, we had chapters dialogues at different points. And so in 2017, the strategic direction uh, was um, uh, published, and um, that is now uh, our process of movement strategy 2030. The Movement Charter Drafting Committee, we come together um, at the moment every week online, uh, two hours, and um, we sometimes have also, also have the privilege to come together in person, um, because in person you have the best discussions, and the, the deepest discussions, and the best exchanges, and um, we, we are just 12, but we actually are here do this work for you, for us, for the whole movement. So please do not be afraid to speak to us because we want to have that direct connection. At the moment, the content that is out uh, on Meta, I think that's the easiest place to, to find what we've written until now. Um, we have um, six different um, chapters, the preamble, and the values of, and principles of our movement. Um, we have a draft on a global council, which we hope would be the global decision-making body of the future. 
um, a new supporting structure called House. It's been um, uh, referenced to uh, several times in the past two days already. We are the ones that can tell you more about the high level House. What, what does it envision to be? What can it do? What might it be able to do for you in your local community? The rights and responsibilities of volunteers, communities, affiliates, and Wikimedia Foundation. And in the case of the volunteer section and the community section, actually, the rights and responsibilities are quite strong about the rights of volunteers. What right do you have as a volunteer? What right do you have as a community? Right? You know? It's, um, it's important. And a glossary. Oh my god, a glossary. A glossary that explains difficult words as what do we mean when we speak about a um, fiscal sponsor? What do we mean by the word of equity? What do we mean um, by all those words what, that might be um, out of your daily um, So, hubs are, um, at, in the mo at the moment, um, envisioned to be regional um, mutual support structures. There, is, uh, there are different people that gather in the hub and they offer mutual support. So it's not top-down, it is equal, equal. Um, and they, they go back and forth. We have a few um, examples uh, that we can uh, share um, if, if there are questions around it, but what, what can it be? Hubs have responsibilities. Um, we divide them into three different sections. Um, a hub must be either a, a support cluster or a coordination cluster. Um, they can be a combination of both, but then one, one has to be priority over the other. And the hubs should also um, present an analysis of what difference the hub will make for the community. It's, it's not um, what is the basis for your hub, what, what justifies um, the existence of the hub that you try to build. Hubs should also collaborate with other Wikimedia organizations. We are a global movement. Don't try to be that solitary player. Coordinate, because only from coordination our work becomes the best work we do. And the structures will work towards standards of diversity, because equity in decision making, we need, as we heard in the previous conversation as well, we need um, diverse voices to make sure that everyone feels represented and is actually represented in that decision making. And hubs could do a whole lot more. They could also um, maybe do uh, play a part in the fundraising activities, space, maybe play a part in regional conferences, maybe play um, a, a part in different uh, ways of collaboration uh, with partners, with, uh, but that's good. Then, Global Council. Can I give the mic to one of you two to explain more about, just give a short recap on Global Council? Yeah. Sure, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, the one the very important part of the Movement Charter is the Global Council. And why is it important? First of all, it's because it's something that doesn't exist. So it's exactly like hubs. It's something that is under creation and where we need participation from the whole community and the whole movement to uh, draft and imagine this Global Council with us. Uh, the Global Council has, uh, even if it doesn't exist, it has a very long background because it comes and originates from the movement strategy recommendations. So when the recommendations were written and discussed, one of the most important points that were brought by always was the Global Council, that there should be an entity that would be a governing body at the level of the movement. Then how this governing body is going to be and the exact details is what we are doing in our drafting committee with the help of everyone who is taking the discussion. So basically the, the Global Council 
is uh, envisioned to be a global structure that is doing governance. Uh, it can have different ways of, uh, of uh, operation. Uh, for example, it can be a big uh, group of really hundreds of people, or it can be a small structure. And also, the roles and responsibilities that it can have are very different and can vary depending on, on how it will be assigned. It's, it will also collaborate a lot between the different stakeholders that are existing, either the Board of Trustees, which will just in this panel, or the Community Foundation, or the different communities, or the hubs. So this Global Council is supposed to be the governance body that exists in, in our uh, Wikimedia, uh, Wikimedia uh, movement. Yeah, so uh, as I said before, it's supposed to have a set of roles and responsibilities. These roles and responsibilities are not set into stone. They're under discussion and one of our tasks in our uh, committee is to write them and then discuss them. We did already this exercise once, so we had a draft that we published in July and we had a discussion in the summer in Wikimania and other venues and we still have a discussion here in Wikimania. So, uh, uh, among the roles that are envisioned or, uh, or that are proposed for the Global Council, uh, we have, for example, suggested in our first draft that the Global Council uh, shall advise the Wikimedia Foundation on fundraising efforts, it shall establish standards and guidelines for the equitable dissemination of funds, uh, it should create or modify committees like uh, the Affiliation Committee or the Language Committee, uh, it will have a lot of, of roles that uh, has the most important goal, which is to ensure inclusive and transparent decision-making processes. But again, I really want to repeat that this is not set in stone. This is something that is suggested from our uh, drafting committee so that we can drive the discussion with everyone uh, from, from the movement. I th that's it. I think now, because we don't have a lot of time, it's better to go into the discussion and discuss most specifically the House and Global Council, but also anything related to the Movement Charter Drafting Committee in general. And I leave the word to Winnie, who is going to moderate the discussion. Great. Thank you so much, Steve. And, um, and as for that great overview, it's always good to ensure that everybody is on, on the same page. Now that we are all on the same page, we have an understanding of where we are and the goal of the Movement Charter. Um, I will open up the floor to an open conversation. Any questions you have around how these uh, structures of governance will coexist? We have the Global Council. I know some of the questions have been how will the alignment be between the Global Council and the existing uh, structures, such as uh, even um, things that are coming up like hubs, uh, existing affiliates. So this is your moment to engage, interrogate, there have also been drafts that have already been published around um, perhaps as well the Global Council. So if you have any concerns around the current drafts, this is also the moment to articulate these issues. So do we have any questions so far to kick us off? I see there's a hand. Um, Please, um, if you can stand while you're speaking and introduce yourself, uh, the community you're from, and then.
So they ask the question like, we are not talking about homes, talking about local council. Now we also talk about affidavits, talk about chapters, talk about user groups. Now they ask the question whereby, what is the, like, how is it categorized? How is there a hierarchy um, in understanding these different sets and different groups? Is there a difference between the uh, chapters, the affiliates, the, the user groups, and what are the criteria of uh, in getting to this stage? So that's my question to the to the um, MCDC group. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. And that's right behind you. Thank you. Um, judges, do you want to take that? Is there a hierarchy or something? Thank you for the question, Lucy. So, um, Mumu Chai Drafting Committee has um, ambassadors uh, that actually speak to local communities um, and explain what the Movement Charter is going to be and who the Movement Charter Drafting Committee is. They connect, they help us connect. Um, and also advisors, people that speak directly also to the committee and sometimes answer questions that we have before we publish it for everyone um, out there. We have frequent calls for new people to join um, either of those positions. Lucy is one of them. Thank you, Lucy. Um, it's indeed a question that we uh, get more often. Um, the house structure is um, not so much a governance structure. And that's actually where it differentiates from affiliates we already have in the movement, in chapters, thematic organizations, and music groups. They all um, in, in, in more or less focus on governance. Hubs are about mutual support. Hubs stand, in, my, in, in our vision, are beside the communities, beside all the user groups and, and chapters that you already have and help them coordinate. They help, for instance, in the previous um, panel, you heard the Board of Trustees talking about Woman Charter 2030, like it all sounds so high up. Hubs are the intermediate level that can help you, okay, but how help you understand as user group, as chapter, what can this, this translate into for my local context? That's that's what a hub can do. So it's not really in the middle, it's it's there next to everything that we already have. I'm not sure maybe one of you wants to compliment. Um, hi, I can share just a little more just to add to that. Um, um, I think in, in our movement generally we try not to think of things in terms of hierarchy because then you talk about governance um, or then we get into talking about politics, sorry. but. Um, where we have affiliates, user groups, thematic organizations, um, these are all formations that come together to say, we're banding together to provide the support that our communities need, that individual contributors need, or we're finding ways to work together to um, increase our impact, whether it is within a thematic area or within a region. Um, affiliates are able to do that um, sometimes faster than perhaps an Envision hub might. But a hub could gather more priorities that are shared amongst multiple affiliates within a specific region and try to address that um, uh, and provide that solution as a service to more than one community at the same time. So as regions are forming uh, affiliate groups and user groups, or thinking about how to build up hub structures, that is the thinking that's you know, going to determine what it looks, looks like. And perhaps within a region or within a thematic area, it is those types of conversations that will determine the role that each um, structure plays uh, within uh, a certain community or within a certain community. السلام عليكم سأتكلم بالعربية وأشكر إلى الأس الأس أنه سيترجم 
Yes, so uh, Professor Rashida is going to ask Arabic and I will translate for him. أولا شكرا لهذا اللقاء المهم بالنسبة لنا، شكرا لأنه تم برمجة هنا في ويكي إلى وإلى كادير، أفيد أفيد لنا جميعا أن نهتم بما هو الشامل، فكرة المجلس العالمي فكرة مهمة جدا. Yeah, so thank you very much for organizing this session and, and uh, being here in Agadir for King Daba and uh, talking about the Women Charter. So the Global Council is a very important uh, area. So I have two questions. The first question is about diversity. Uh, how can we ensure to have diversity in the Global uh, Council and especially gender diversity? So how, how, how do we have mechanisms to ensure that there will be female participants in the Global Council? Uh, and the second question is also about diversity, uh, but about geography. So how can the Global Council ensure that there will be a good geographical diversity in, the, in it? Uh, can you give or provide more details about this and tell us if you have thought uh, how the diversity will be either in terms of gender, in geography or other uh, criteria? Thank you. Uh, I, I want to speak in, in French, please. And as you can help me also to translate, please. En fait, par rapport à la question de la diversité, je voudrais quand même dire que le, le, le MCDC n'a pas je dis que la, la solution. Hein. Nous faisons un travail de, de recherche sur la base aussi des consultations, sur la base des échanges qu'on a de façon régulière avec la communauté. Et nous nous disons que la communauté, vous, par exemple, vous pouvez vous faire des propositions sur comment résoudre les questions aussi d'équité, puisque c'est évidemment le Conseil mondial euh, qui va être mis sur pied par en fait d'une recommandation qui est justement de résoudre le problème de l'équité. Uh, what we are doing is that we are working together with you and we would like to, to hear from you what, how you think we can envision to have this diversity and most specifically also in terms of equity. Donc ce que nous voulons aussi vous écouter sur des propositions concrètes. C'est vraiment un sujet qui nous préoccupe aussi à notre sein et on n'a pas la solution pour dire ok, pour la représentativité ou bien pour l'équité en termes de genre et autres, voici ce qu'on doit appliquer. So, so we don't have a concrete solution in terms of diversity or equity that we will just tell you this is the solution that we have. We actually want to hear from you. What are your proposals? Donc je peux dire en fait, l'idée aussi que nous avons dans les échanges que nous avons reçus, c'est que le Conseil mondial en fait serait pour soutenir en fait ta proposition, professeur, c'est que cela pourrait être l'entité qui représenterait toutes les composantes du mouvement multimédia. C'est ça l'idée. Maintenant, est-ce que En termes de représentativité, on sera, ce sera équitable. Là, personnellement, ou bien comme MCDC, je ne sais pas si le dit. Oui. So uh, the main idea behind the global council is that this is going to be uh, a committee, uh, a council or a body that will be uh, for the full community, for all the community, all the movement. Then, how to do it? I don't have the answer. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's clear for her or her, if she needs to be there. 
It's very nice to be here again with you and, and, and hear your question. I think um, what you see um, from us here, like me complaining about the word of equity because we don't have it in Dutch, uh, George uh, responding in, in French to your question, it is um, Anas standing up because, hey, let me do the translation from Arabic to English and from French to English back again. It's like um, we hope we can find that kind of solutions within the Global Council. It might not be perfect in a first draft, but we hope we will be able to address those challenges because it came up in the previous uh, panel with the Board of Trustees and their elections as well. It is, but it is something that needs to be um, tackled by the movement in general and, and as, as a whole. Um, I know from Jenica's perspective, we've been working on the topic for 10 years now and um, it's, it's still difficult because how do you really do that? And I think it's, it's something we need to test and have ideas and you know that will um, uh, grow um, in a better way. I hope that three of us together um, were able to at least address your question a little bit and take away a, a, a bit of the concern. Thank you. Je voudrais prendre un exemple concret, peut-être pour, pour montrer un peu la, la... Je voulais prendre un exemple concret pour montrer combien euh, la question est délicate. Restons simplement en Afrique. L'Afrique, c'est l'Afrique du Nord, l'Afrique centrale, l'Afrique de l'Est. So I want to give you a concrete example to show you how this question is complex. So in Africa, we have North Africa, Central Africa, Eastern Africa. Si on veut parler de la représentativité de l'Afrique, on fait comment Si on se limite au Nord, au Nord, on sélectionne sur quels critères oh, En Afrique, on sélectionne sur quels critères En Afrique de l'Est, on sélectionne sur... C'est un peu la problématique à laquelle on est confronté. Et il faudrait pouvoir... Je ne sais pas s'il y a une baguette magique qui va vous dire « Ok, voici ce qu'il faudrait faire ». So if we think about representativity, what are the criteria that we are going to use for Northern Africa, Eastern Africa, Central Africa? Uh, we don't have a magical stick to make it work. Donc, vous, vos contributions aussi seraient, sont la bienvenue dans le cadre de travail. Merci. So your contributions are very welcome uh, to enrich this work. Thank you. So, to also um, Georgie, as it's seen, and um, York as well. One of the questions that our communities have also been asking, if we go back to the movement uh, charter, prioritization discussions, the you know, conversations that inform the idea to create hubs in the movement, part of it was to enhance um, equity in decision making and also um, equitable access to resources. So a conversation that people have been asking in the movement is whether they really need to be hubs or they have to actually become hubs in order to have access to uh, resources. What would you say in regards to that? I, I, can, I can start, um, but the direct answer to that is no, <laughs> first of all. Uh, but of course, as with everything, there's context. Um, so, hubs should be, you know, what we are learning so far from the hubs that have been implemented, or are being implemented, or discussions that are happening, is that they should happen because there's a need. If there's no need, there's no need. If the needs are already being met in one way, shape, form, or fashion, maybe a hub is not what you need. Maybe you just need to strengthen affiliates. And then when we talk about resources, um, there are different words. Often we say resources and we're thinking financial resources. Financial resources are important, they are crucial. But other need resources are needed. If you're, for, as an affiliate, if you're trying to hire, you might need legal advice. Do you only need resources for that? Or what if there's legal advice that can be provided that you don't need to spend money on because we have legal experts within the movement. Um, if you are setting out on a program and you need to 
conduct some research and you need, you know, you need some researchers. Do you, are those resources already available? Uh, perhaps in the form of existing research that you just need to analyze and you need to find the right people. Uh, so look, we're just saying that there, sometimes resource is human, sometimes resource is data, sometimes resource is financial. Uh, if we're clear about what we need, uh, more often than not we'll find it. But the direct answer again is you don't need to form a hub to get the resources that you need. But we do need structures that enable us to easily access the resources. Thank you very much, Yoko. I just wanted to add something because in our presentation we went quite fast to leave time for a Q&A, which is fine. But uh, I wanted to give some insights about uh, our draft in relation with hubs. Because uh, in our draft was pretty rich uh, talking about, about hubs. Uh, and in, in our draft, we mentioned explicitly that in order to be able to create a hub, and this is very important for us in the African community, you need to have at least two affiliates to form a hub. So you cannot have a group of people coming from five different countries where they don't have a user group and they form a hub. I wanted to clarify this because that was part of, of our draft. And I don't know if anyone here wants to challenge this, this vision because we want to hear actually uh, what your opinions are. Yes, because in, in the charter we need to have clear definition of a hub and what's the difference between a hub and a user group. Because there are user groups who are across different countries. There, there exists, for example, uh, Kim Media Levant. They are not in Africa, but they are in four countries. So, so that's one of the interesting points we, we, we're talking about a lot in, in our drafting committee. What is for you the difference between a hub and a user group? I know that it's over time, but I think it's interesting. I'm watching for a timekeeper to tell us how, how much overtime we're allowed to go. Yeah, exactly. And I don't want to keep everyone from lunch, right? Next, next one is lunch. That's one session, yeah, sure. So, sorry, we, we, but, but it is true, we're, we're continuously looking still for feedback on the drafts that we've published, new ideas that arrive, because sometimes the idea just comes to you, you know, it grows, you have, you're not completely satisfied with what's published on Meta, and then you start to think, and you have great ideas. Bring them in, we need them. So, um, what to expect next? As Anna said, um, uh, we um, uh, hope to continue conversations like these, um, but also we have, we now have started a monthly drop-in sessions. You can watch them live on YouTube every first Thursday of the month, or you can join us through the Zoom link and join in the discussions and join in the breakout rooms and give us active feedback um, on the topics uh, on the topic that that month is uh, scheduled for discussion. Um, we hope uh, that you will be able to join us in Berlin uh, with Media Summit. And um, <laughs> thank you, Timekeeper. Um, we hope that you're able to join us in Berlin at the summit because we hope to have a first full charter draft available for you and your feedback. And we want to. We are working together with partners to um, uh, design that summit so there's room and place for all of you to give us that feedback and to talk to us and to explain to us. Um, so, any last words? Yeah. I, want to, I want to add something about... I want to this appeal that I launched, excuse me, en français et en anglais. C'est l'appel que je lance véritablement, tel qu'on euh, africain, c'est que le constat qui est fait actuellement, c'est que très peu d'Africains, très peu d'Africains euh, prennent part aux réunions qui sont faites. Et je l'ai dit à plusieurs reprises, c'est que la charte du mouvement qui va être ratifiée va influencer tout le mouvement dans la globalité, que ce soit uh, I, I would like to have a call, to make a call for our African fellows present here. Uh, I, I noticed, George noticed that there are very few Africans who join our meetings. And the movement the charter that is uh, actually being drafted and will be ratified will impact our movement, it will influence it. Donc, 
avance. Moi, je ne voudrais pas que les Africains restent en retrait parce que si on reste en retrait, on ne pourra peut-être que euh, être des suivistes. Mais si on est véritablement des acteurs de la chose, on pourra apporter nos contributions sur ce qui sera fait. So I, I don't want us to just sit and observe because then we will be just followers of what will be decided. We need to be actors and we need to be proactive and, and take part of this work. Personnellement, je souhaiterais que le professeur qui a été mis à l'heure puisse véritablement intégrer les réunions qui sont organisées. Sincèrement, moi je pense que le service d'avoir les questions qui sont posées, cela peut aider le travail qui est en train d'être fait. So I sincerely wish that the professor who asked the question before can join us in our meeting and uh, that uh, she can participate and ask us questions during the meetings that we have. Tu vois ce que je voulais ajouter pour, pour interpeller ou inviter les Africains à nous rejoindre dans les travaux tra qui sont organisés de façon régulière. Merci. So I just wanted to say that and I invite all the Africans to uh, join us in our uh, upcoming meetings. Thank you. just to echo uh, George's words for the African Wikimedians in the room. I know because of the nature of our communities, a lot of the priorities is on just community building at the local level, which is also very important, but as those conversations are happening, the movement, um, global conversations are also growing. So uh, please get into these spaces and engage. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I know it's one thing to call to action, it's another thing to respond to, to you where you are and based on what you need. So please spread the word, if there's a reason why you're not able to effectively engage, if, there, if there's a way that the space is created, or if there's a way that the conversation is happening, or if we're using language that doesn't make sense to you, Please reach out to the MCDC. I'm also available when is with communications. Let us know what the challenges are for you to actively engage so that we can also proactively make sure that the space is created. Thank you.